This video will cover the steps to reset back to factory defaults for the following products and products via Scantle version 5.1. Out of all of these, uh, the QBMP820 series and the 835, a uh, bit of a caveat in there, the firmware has to be 3.3.11 for the quick bridge and version 3.3.10 for the MP or above uh, for uh, later versions that are going to be released. Uh, if you have a firmware that is lower than this, you have to upgrade to one of these two firmwares and then you'll be able to use this particular procedure. Okay, I have a couple of notes to add. In order for scan tool version 5.1 to function, WinCap must be installed. Also, uh, as the reset works at the bootloader level, VLAN configuration will not impact the procedure. Now a few more quick notes. Uh, the Proxim radios must be directly connected to the PC, uh, to the NIC. It cannot be connected to a switch or router, must be directly connected to the NIC or this function is not going to work. Also, uh, the NIC must have a static IP address of 169.254.128.133. Uh, with a 24-bit subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. Uh, the firewall must be disabled. If not, uh, the scan tool is not going to work. Also, when resetting the quick bridge, 10100 back to factory defaults, both radios are going to revert back to endpoint A. To reestablish an RF link, the far end unit will have to be reconfigured to endpoint B. Also, when resetting a quick bridge 9100 back to factory defaults, the radio modes do not change. The near radio will remain as an endpoint A, and the far end radio will remain as an endpoint B. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so as mentioned, there's several things that need to be done first. Number one is that you have to have a static IP address on your NIC. Uh, 169.254.128.133. It has to be that .133 because that is what the uh, radio is looking for on the bootloader side. Okay, number two, we have to make sure that the firewall is disabled. Okay, very important that we have the firewall disabled. Okay, so let's go ahead and close all these. And number three, okay, uh, mentioned that WinPCAP has to be installed. So when you don't have WinPCAP installed and you run the scan tool for the first time, this is the message that you're going to see, okay? So after you install WinPCAP, uh, then you could go ahead and start the... Uh, start the scan tool. All right, one last uh, one last bit. Uh, you have to be in admin mode, administrator mode, for the reset reload function to work. So uh, I guess there's two ways you could do it. You could right click and then just go to run as admin. Um, what I do is I just go to kind of properties, go down to compatibility, and uh, just go ahead and do run this program as administrator applying okay so that way you don't have to um, go through that uh, right click all the time so now when you press on it you're gonna get this okay and here we are go ahead and select your NIC uh, your IP address the 133 and click OK okay so let's go ahead and cover how to do a forced reload via uh, scan tool version 5.1 uh, Okay, so there's uh, several things that, as mentioned before, that we need to have prior till uh, we could uh, start the force filler procedure. Right? Number one is going to be the uh, the firmware itself. Okay. Uh, number two is going to be the scan tool, uh, version 5.1, and then the TFTP server. All right. So you could it doesn't matter the order. We just need uh, all three. All right, so here's the scan tool. Uh, here's uh, my TFTP server. In this case, I'm using SolarWinds, and here is my uh, firmware right, that I am using. I uh, just make sure that uh, uh, for TFTP server, once again, I'm using SolarWinds. Uh, it's very important that you put uh, uh, the firmware in the TFTP root directory. That's mine. That's where mine is right now. Uh, in SolarWinds case, you just click on File, 
configure and down here you hit browse so if you put on your desktop the folder on uh, your desktop just go ahead and point towards that folder where the firmware is and you are okay all right um, also make sure that your fir uh, your firewall is disabled all right very important okay so let's go ahead and get started on the uh, reload process here all right so uh, as you can see I have my radio up okay so let's go ahead and get started on the uh, force reload procedure. Okay, so you can see my radio here. Uh, it could be a possibility that you won't be able to see the radio. Uh, maybe you lost contact with it uh, because it works at the bootloader level. Um, and that's really not going to matter. So what we can do is we're going to come down here, all right, and we're going to go ahead and press uh, reload and reset. Uh, one uh, important uh, thing that I've, I need to mention is that you have to make sure that the scan tool uh, you run it as administrator. So I'm going to go close it. So you could go ahead and right click it and you could go ahead and select run as administrator. Uh, what I always do is just go ahead down in properties, uh, compatibility, and I just check this down here. So um, applying OK. So next time when you run it, it's going to give you this and you don't need to kind of go through that whole process all the time. All right. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and press Reload Reset. We're going to start. All right, and uh, down here, up here, it, see, it tells you pretty much everything that we cover. It has to be directly connected to a PC. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, you have the ability to turn on and off the radio. Uh, so make sure that the PoE is basically right next to you. Um, you should have a TFTP server running, of course, and uh, uh, the NIC needs to be set at the, the IP address that we mentioned. And, of course, the firewall should be disabled. Okay, so go ahead and click OK. All right, so here is our net console. So uh, we have the ability to do a reload and a reset. All right, uh, the reset's covered in a different video. All right. Uh, down here, you can see there's a help. Now, it's grayed out. Now, um, if for any reason the process fails, it's going to be uh, available. You press on it, and it's going to tell you whatever changes that you have to make. Let's just say that your IP address is .135. Okay? Uh, it's going to fail, and when you click Help, it's going to tell you what the issue is, and it's going to tell you to change it to 133. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and click Reload. Okay, so uh, here's going to be the process. We're going to turn it off, click OK, and turn it back on. For me, I'm just uh, uh, using the POE, uh, unplug in and plug it back in. So this process by itself does not take a long time, uh, under um, two minutes. Okay, so um, at this particular point, we know that we are uh, running without any issues. If there were any issues, it would have errored out uh, prior to this screen. Okay, so here we are. Firmware and configuration deleted. It's going to reboot. You could go ahead and close the window. Okay, so um, as you can see, the radio is back. All right. Go ahead and do a quick rescan. And here we are. Right, so the radio has been uh, placed in the force reload state. The image has been deleted. Uh, one of the quickest ways that you could tell, you could see the system name. Um, there is no dashes here. So it, uh, when there is an image, it would say system dash name. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, upload the firmware. We're going to go ahead and click change. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and enter all this information. All right, uh, here's the uh, IP address of the radio. That's just the one we're going to give it for now. Uh, the subnet mask here is our gateway. Um, I make the gateway the same as uh, your TFTP server slash PC. So in this case, it's going to be .133. Here's the image. Okay, so uh, the easiest way is just go ahead, uh, go to where your uh, image is. Right here, just uh, right click, go to properties, and just copy this right here and go ahead and paste it and the default is public and after you're done just go ahead and click OK for right now what we do is we're gonna go to the TFTP server so it's gonna reboot right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until we see the uh, the start of the firmware upload and then it's it's pretty quick and then it's going to go ahead and reboot. 
Okay, so said it happens pretty quick. Here's the uh, here's the firmware, and it was um, the transfer was completed. So now the only thing we really need to do is uh, wait until the radio uh, reboots, and that could take up to a minute, minute and a half or so. Okay, so uh, I did a rescan a couple of times, and here we are. The radio is back up. Uh, here it is right here. Uh, like I said before, earlier, you can see here that the system name has a dash here, and you can see it's also capital letters. And when we go ahead and click Change, you can see that uh, the TFTP IP server and the image name, those are grayed out. Right? So if they were available, that means the radio is in the force reload state. Uh, right now we are okay so we could go ahead and cancel out so now you could go ahead and access the radio uh, via this IP address then you could go ahead and make the changes whatever you want um, or if you want to change the IP right away you could go ahead and click change change the IP address here just make sure that your uh, um, the IP address on your Ethernet card matches the IP address that you're going to give the radio uh, there's one other thing that I do want to mention. Uh, there is a uh, help option here in um, in the scan tool to let you know if you've done something wrong so far. So let's just say when you hit this in here, you can see down here it's help and it's grayed out. Okay, so let me go ahead and close all this and I will show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the IP address on my NIC to a let's say a dot uh, 134 one okay so now I'll click OK and let me close this out okay so I'm gonna go ahead and select adapter and make sure we have the correct adapter now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process okay so now after um, after the process where it boots up remember it is looking for a um, dot 133 it's going to give us a error message and then uh, we'll be able to press on the help and it's going to tell us what is wrong what changes need to be done to uh, rectify the issue okay so here is our error message please check the device connection and try again okay click help for more so we're going to click OK and then here's the help now you can see right over here restart the application Right, and set the NIC to dot one thirty three. So, um, if you see that error message, go ahead and uh, press the help. It's going to tell us exactly what uh, what is wrong. Now, there's other things down here as well. Uh, so we do have to make sure that um, that we follow. But this one this is the first one. This is the one that we try first, and then if that doesn't work, then go ahead and follow everything else about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.